She was born the daughter of average parents in Lagos, Nigeria, in West Africa. With all her father's gratuitous benefit, the family afforded her the airfare that landed her in the British city of London. Her initial hopes of walking on streets of gold were dashed. The realities of the Western world were harsh. She worked hard to leave, from a chambermaid to cleaner and small-time cashier. Fell in love with the love of her life who could barely afford a bed in the land of the plenty. Her pathway was clear. Marry a man for his vision, not his wallet. The years have been kind too. Gone back to school, learned her lessons and now lives the life she imagined. Others learned from her through her social media handles. Humanity benefits from her charity, lifestyle tips and reality TV program designed to have people shine. Meet Masi Balogun or Masi B. She is in Freetown. She is on a mission. Masi B intends to use her hard-earned wealth to transform the story of the African woman in the best interest of the African child. Welcome to this very special interview. I am here with Masi Balogun, very popularly known as Masi B. Welcome. Thank you. You're here in Sierra Leone. Yes. And almost for the first time. Yes. In this part of West Africa. Yes. Although it's not your first relationship with Sierra Leoneans, mm -hmm. you have a huge number of the 42,000 people or more following you on the social media yes. being Sierra Leoneans. Yes. 50% of those who follow you are Sierra Leoneans. Yes. To the extent that you are pulled to their country. That's Here true. you are in Sierra Leone, 10 years of entrepreneurship and looking forward to working with uh, local institutions in this country that are particularly biased towards humanitarianism. Yes. You want to work with women and with children, two vulnerable groups yes. the world knows. Mm. Let us hear more on what brought you flying into Sierra Leone. Yeah, that's a good one. So where do we start from? <laughs> start anywhere. <laughs> You know what, I have so, like your rifle say, I have so many Sierra Leonean on my page. And I'm always saying this, every time they're on my page, they're asking, oh, they have this, they call me dear, they call me mom, and they say, oh, you know, we want you to adopt us, we want you to be our mom, we are inspired by your word. Every day they look forward to it, because I do like a daily devotion every day. So I put something, encouragement, you know, just to encourage people. And I find out that they actually drawn to it. They wait for it. They look forward to it. And some of them, they will inbox me privately to talk to me about what they're going through. That's what drawn at my attention that what's going on in this place? Obviously, I'm hearing so much that Sierra Leone have been through, you know, the wall and all kind of things. So I kind of have a, you know, a bit of understanding of what is going on. So I thought this would be nice because obviously it's good to speak to somebody online. Because most of them, they will ask me that, can you vent on me? I can mentor you online. It's never the same. One to one is different. So I'll be like, I can't as much as I would love to. But if you want to speak to me about anything, I will speak to you. But having hear what they have to say and what is going on, you know, in the nation right now. So I feel that there's a need to be here. I can't do whatever I wanted to do online. Online, I have its own, you know, presence. But when I'm here physically, I can actually relate and offer my help because that's what I love to do, to empower, to motivate. I do a lot of mentoring for young people. And I know a lot of women have been through a lot in this part of the world. And it doesn't stop me the fact that I'm in Nigeria. We are all black. So I'm only one hour away from Syria alone. And even when I, I came here maybe a few days ago, I can speak one or two languages from your side now. You're nodding your head. You try it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, that's, that, that's very good. Um, mm -hmm. So now that you're here and you have this huge bias for humanitarian work, yeah. how much do you think you can work with local non-governmental organizations or even governmental organizations to effect what you feel inside you have this great belief in god you yes. think you can activate dreams you think you can help people win whatever they're looking forward to yes. because you can uh, relate yes. with such situations can, yes. how do you think you can work within sierra leone sierra leone just changed government yes you know so uh, there are many areas 
in need of some attention at yeah. this time. What I wanted to do is to work with charity in this place. I've done my research because I want to get to the right people. I don't want to just do it because that's the right thing to do. I want to relate. I can be in England and be sending the money to charity here, send it to homeless units, send it to this one. How am I going to be sure that it's getting to the right people? That's why I have to come here physically. So I will be doing my visit. I'm going to go around to the various charity to actually see what they're doing. I'm not starting nothing new. I just want to be part of what they're doing already so that I can have my own, you know, my own experience, empower the woman, see the woman, because I know that a lot of women that they abuse, they've been through a lot, that they even given up on life, is that you can't amount to anything. So because for somebody that I used to be an immigrant and I find myself in a foreign land, so I've been through, I've, trust me, what you see can look like, oh, some people go on my page, they thought it's all glamour. But I make sure that, listen, but you don't be fooled by what you see. I have my own challenges. You want to help organizations yes. whose focus is to give to society. That's it. Charitable organizations. That's what I want to do. Because you can identify with these organizations. What they're doing, yes. You are a Nigerian. Yes. A Nigerian who became an immigrant in the UK. That's it. And it wasn't a very pleasant experience in any sense of the word yes what was it like when you landed in the uk only to realize that it is not what you had been thinking when you were far away in nigeria with these dreams <laughs> of going abroad to the united kingdom and experiencing a walk on the streets of gold oh yeah that's my dream exactly i thought i'm going to england to walk on the street of gold I left my country at the age of 19, so you can imagine, very, very young, fresh. You know, I'm like energetic, I'm ready, you know, I'm going to make it. I'm going to a place where nothing, you know, everything is supposed to go right. On getting to the nation, I realized that it's not as, you know, <laughs> in the way it was painted to me, that is not how the place really was. I have to really work. And I remember that at that time, I have to get three jobs. I was working as a chambermaid. I was working as a cleaner and then in the evening I would do like a, um, I work as a cashier. That's what I do. Then I'll go home every day. It was so tough because what I, my, you know when you have Three a jobs in 24 hours? Yes, that's what I do. Three jobs. I started my day maybe from 7 in the morning and I won't finish my job until 11 in the night. Every day, seven days a week. Because I have to survive. For how much money? At the time maybe I'm getting about 100 pounds or less a month. All together, 100 pounds Yeah, a because week? Because at the time, I'm talking about how many years ago? Maybe about 20 years ago? So maybe, I mean, it's something at the time. One job I might be getting about 65 pounds, the other one, because remember, they have part-time jobs. So I'm doing, chamber mid is the longest one. The other one, the cleaning job is about two hours. Then the one I would do in the evening is around that three hours. So just enough for me to survive. Because I have to pay my rent, I have to send money to my parents in Nigeria so I have so many expenses that I have to cover and I'm young and I have to survive I can't go back home with empty-handed I can't even though comparatively you were a different youth in yes. a different situation yes earning monies your peers in Africa would only dream of yes but even during those periods yeah. did you start thinking that with your situation at that time you could be able to change the lives of your peers in Africa? No. At that time, it was like, <laughs> you, you know you're trying to survive. You don't even think you can help yourself. Not alone, you can help somebody. But one thing, one thing that kept, you know, kept me going is one, my faith and my upbringing. Because this is what I always say about Africans, no matter what, whatever situation that we find ourselves, we have this thing, we have this inner strength that wants us to say we will survive. And that's why we're still standing, even up to now, considering everything that we have been through as a nation, either in Nigeria, even in Syria alone, what, the, what you guys have been through. It's that thing that even you're living in poverty, even things around you doesn't look the same, but you still believe that I can do it. That helps me a lot. Because I find myself, I'm like, I'm in this place. I can't go back. I can only go forward. So what do I do? I have to make it work. 
and that is what kept me going and everything my parents taught me about Jesus about Christ about faith you keep coming back in. That's why I say to mothers, don't ever give up on your children. Keep telling them. You seem to have a very strong belief oh, in yeah, God. I do. How has that affected your want to share? Because even coming to Sierra Leone yeah. and wanting to help charities with what you have made yeah. is coming from a deep desire That's it. to want to share. Yes. To what extent has your faith helped that? Because if you, as a believer, that's my faith. I believe that, you know, in sharing, I believe that what God has done for me, I can empower many people through my testimony. What I've been through, whatever you went through in life, it's not just for you. It's your testimony to help other people. So if I went through some things in life, it's not to say, oh, okay, this is good. That is something that I can use. That is a mess that I can turn to a message. So every test is your testimony, basically. So every mess you go through, you can turn into a message. That's why I'm sitting here today. If I've never went through anything, I have nothing to give. So I'm coming from the angle of what God has done for me. That's why I cannot be still. I can't just be quiet when I'm seeing people on my page crying out for my help, asking me for help. I'll be time, long time on the phone, on my thing, answering people one by one, canceling them online. It's a whole lot of job, and it's because of my passion, because it's what I love to do. For me, it's not work. I love it. I just there. I can be there for hours, talking to people that I've never seen before in my entire life, but I know they need me because of my faith and because what God has done for me. I can't be selfish about that. And because I felt the need that I'm needed here, it doesn't matter. Because people, they have this thing that, oh, it's not your country. Yes, I've been to Nigeria. I'm born in Nigeria. This is what I always say about myself. I'm born in Nigeria. Package in UK and I'm sent to the world. Exactly. <laughs> That's it. So let's now, make it like that. 19 years in a strange land. Mm. Working as a chambermaid. Yes. Working as a cleaner. Yes. Working as a part time cashier. Yes. Few years, let's say three years later, you were married at the age of 22. Two. Yes. Which is like 30 years ago. Yes, this year. And you have the courage. To write a book that says fall in love fall in love with his vision not his wallet meaning that what you did was to fall in love with the man you married not because he was rich but because he seemed to have a road to traverse that will bring everything you looked for how did you realize that he had a vision that you should share together that's a very good one <laughs> Because when I met my husband, trust me, he had absolutely nothing to offer me. And at the time, remember, very young woman, at that age, if you're that age, you're looking for a man that have everything together. Maybe, you know, the way you dress, suit, everything, all together. But this is a man that has absolutely nothing to give me. He was living in a very small room, you know. He doesn't, he can't even, at that time, he could not even afford to buy a bed, his mattress is on the floor. So you can picture, in UK, you know in Africa, so you can picture how bad that would look. But one thing that stood out, because at that time I had so other men, how many men chasing after me that they want to go out with me, they, yeah, they have a car, they have a house, you know, what you want, wanted at the time. But this man, something stood out from, from, from the rest. The way he talk, the way he carry himself, Sometimes he'll be sharing his vision with me and I'll be thinking, for a man that doesn't even have a bed, <laughs> you seem to have a lot going for you. <laughs> but he doesn't see himself, you see what I mean? He doesn't see his present state right now, his present situation. He didn't see it. He was telling me, he was taking me on a journey of what the future will look like. That, listen, this is not me now. In the next this year, I'm going to have my own company. I'm going to have this one. I'm going to buy you a new car. We're going to have a company. And I keep looking, I'm like, wow, you've got a vision. And that really, you know, it really, I was fascinated by that. That this is a young man. Because these days, if you ask most men, where do you want to be in the next, even one month, don't let me go one year. They can't tell you. They don't even know what they want to do. They're like babies. They're not mature. But it's a man, at the time my husband would be about maybe 26 years old, and yet he knows everything he wanted to do. 
And for me, that is what wins my heart. And I'm like, you know what? This man, all he ever needed is just a woman to believe and work with him. Because women, we are helpmates. If you find a woman that can help you with your vision, that believe in your vision. Didn't you see him himself. talking bigger than he really was? Like you said, yes. you know, you have all these great ideas. Yes. But what I see now doesn't represent it doesn't. Uh, what it doesn't you resonate. want to be. No. Is this just wishful thinking or you're saying all this to impress me or what you read in a book? Do you know one thing about him is that even though he talks, but it's not talk is shape. He carry himself like that. He walk so so hard. Even in the in the in the present situation that he was, he's a very hard working man. He wake up in the right time, he goes to work, he, whatever that he will have, he makes sure that even from that little money, the way this guy will look after me. So it's not because I say to women all the time, don't talk to me. Talk is sheep. Anybody can talk. I need to say, show me. When we are working then, because remember I said I was working as a chambermaid, he was working as a leaning porter. He cleaned the towers in the hotel. And if I say I like something, because where we are working, we are working in the West End in London, so many shops are there, expensive shops, they sell shoes, bags. Obviously, I'm a woman, I love that. So when we're working together, I can look at one shoe and I'll say, oh, that look really nice. Mm. So we keep working because I know he can't afford it. What's the point? Do you know what he would do? He would go back to the shop behind me. He would, he would tell the shopkeeper that, can I be deposited money on this shoe till I finish paying for it? It can take him about three months to buy me one pair of shoes. But do you know, he will still go ahead and do it. The day he will bring the shoe to me, I will, I will almost pass out. The poor boy with the big heart. I would, thank you. I'll be like, did, did you steal the money? How can you afford this shoe? He'll be like, no, I've been saving towards it. I've been giving towards it for the past three months because I noticed that you love it. Obviously, I can't afford to buy it for you at the time. So the but chambermaid I'm, and the poor boy. Poor boy. Very much Leaning in love. Water. <laughs> there were others who could do more, but you wanted him. Yes. And he wanted you. Yes. You were made for each other. Yes. And then you agreed to marry him. Yes. I agreed to marry him because I know that, one, I love him. He's passionate. He loves me. That's the most important thing. And then, it's got a vision that I know that if we work together, we can amount to something. I know it, it will work. And that's exactly what happened. And after you got married, things changed? Yes. How did things change? We still have our challenges because when we got married, remember, we still, we still have, you know, obviously the challenges that we are struggling to have our paper in the country. And I go, we got married and I got pregnant. And by the time I have my baby, we are homeless. That's another chapter in our life because we couldn't obviously get a property. So we are renting. So when we are renting, the landlord didn't pay. So, they, you know. They, we are evicted from the property. So I left, I remember I left the hospital. Imagine a brand new baby. I left the hospital. I hold the baby in my hand. We don't have a place to go. Because when I have the baby, I told them in the hospital that I wasn't feeling well because I don't have a place to go to. Because after the, to be honest, it's my first child. After two hours or so, I'm ready to go. But I keep telling them, I'm not feeling well because there's no place to go. So I keep telling my husband, you need to work on this. We need a place to go. Because the hospital, they keep telling me, you look well, we need the bed. So eventually we have to leave. And I remember where I was standing, I hold my baby and I look up to heaven like, where am I going to take this baby? It's like, I feel like Mary, you know, Mary and Joseph, they have it. place to take baby Jesus. I'm like, where am I going to go with this baby? We have no place. On first night, when I left the hospital, we slept in a hostel. They gave us one hostel, a tiny room with, you know, with a bed, a double-decker bed. So my husband slept on the top one. I was down there and then we ate on the floor. My first night out of the hospital. And you know a day like that, it's a day that you come home, they give you balloon. Actually in London, your husband will come and give you all kind of thing that, ah, you're having your first baby. I didn't have all that. And I remember when I would be lying on the bed, I would see other men coming to pick their wife to go home in a nice, you know, uh, push chair and everything. And I would lie down and I would be thinking, God, where am I going to go? I don't even have any of this. But today is a different story because it's all here. Because every time in life, nothing just happens. It's a process. And that's why I have a message today. That's why I can write a book. 
because if I never went through that, what do I want to write? What brought about the term? Because people follow you on social media. Yeah. They tell you their stories. Yeah. They explain their problems. Yes. Because you do not just hold yourself out as big ears, somebody that could hear, yeah. or big mouth, <laughs> somebody that could just talk. Yeah. But because you have a passionate being, mm. you can listen, Yes. you can relate, Yes. you know you've gone through the worst okay. in this life, Yes. you know you can share your own experience to tell them that all is not lost, Yes. you know you can calm them down. How did your story change for the better? When did the uphill climb start? Hmm. This is because, like I said, um, I was doing like three jobs, chamber maid, all kind of odd job to survive. But one day, I will always relate to that when, you know, when all my mindset changes. I was doing my cleaning job. And on the day that I was doing my cleaning job, I, uh, one of these girl, the one girl was working late. I think it's one of the staff. She was working late. Um, she's a black girl, sitting down there with a computer in front of her, a table, everything looked good. And that's what I wanted. And I look at her and I'm like, I'm gone here. What changes? Why am I cleaning for her? We are both black. She looked like my age group and I'm doing this job. How long do I plan on doing this job for? This is not me. I have to do this to survive. But when do, I mean, things have to change eventually. And on that day, I still have to pick the bin. I have to clean the table, it's my job. But when I left that day, I said, no, something has to change. Whatever I need to do, I'm gonna make it in this land. So this was a black girl like you? Like me. Somebody you think, uh, shouldn't be there whilst you are on the other end yes a girl whose situation whose position you desired a woman who was working as a professional yes on whom you had to wait to clean pick her and clean after her yep and you thought if she could do it i can do it okay let I me can hear do that it. that is what i said i said if she can do it yes I can do it. That night, I left with a different mindset, totally. When I got home, I told my husband, I am changing my life. I am going back to uni. I'm going to do something about my life, and I'm getting myself a good job. No more cleaning job. I've had enough. What did he say? Supported me 100%. He's always there for me. Whatever I want to do, he's there. He said, darling, if that's what you want to do, you go for it. Let's work on it. So this. a fellow black girl made you change your mind? Yes. Now you did not want to be a chambermaid or a cashier or a cleaner anymore? No. You wanted to I've be a graduate? Enough. Yes. I've so had enough. off to uni? Off to uni. And it works. I went to uni. I studied housing management. I did everything. You studied I housing management? Yes. Okay. Because my husband was, you know, obviously because we went through homelessness at one stage. So that kind of inspired me to want to know more how, to, how, we, how we can help around that side. So I studied housing management. And then after that, I got a job as a housing officer. My first job, you can imagine, it was about 15000 per annum. And at the time, that's like, <laughs> for somebody that's getting about 100 pounds or more, a week now i'm on fifteen thousand per annum it was like a dream come true and how did that happen here i changed my mindset i begin to see myself the way god sees me i didn't want to uh, you know people will tell you who you are you need to believe what did god say about you it's not about what you say to me or how i see myself how did god sees me who am i because I know what the Bible says about me. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. You need to believe that. And that is what happened for me. And from that time, there's no stopping. No, 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 no. There's no stopping for me. I keep looking. So once forward. you started receiving 1,500 pounds. A month. You started looking forward. And there has been no stop. Yep. What happened after? After that, obviously, I'm having my children. I started, I'm, you know, doing more. 
I think I started, I have about three children. So I think after having two, then I started my home business. Because I realized that, you know, babysitting and everything, and I wanted to spend time with my children. I don't want anybody to raise them because the child minding in the UK is not really my cup of tea. So we decided between two of us that, okay, you stay at home, look after the children for now. My husband was working. I still have my certificate, doing whatever I can do at home. Then, after the children have now been full-time school, you can then follow your dream, which now I'm free like anything. I help support my husband to do whatever that he's doing so that I can be at home with the children. But the children are holding up. He's now there to support me with my own vision. So that way, we have a relationship with our children, and at the same time, we have a dream. You do not only have this uh, huge social media following where people ask for your advice where people ask for your suggestion mm -hmm. where people look for a shoulder to cry on yeah. where sierra leoneans ask you <laughs> to adapt them yes. to advise them <laughs> yes. to show them the way forward to the extent that you have come to their country yes you also have a huge heart to give back to society yes. something you may not have enjoyed during those tasking mm -hmm. and struggling days no. how much money have you made to the extent that you're now willing to give to charity to help those who cannot afford things by themselves? I won't say that I have so much that I just want to give them away, but in whatever that you have, because the principle of the Bible is the gift and it will come back to you. So even if it's because it's not about how much you give, that's how I say it. it's the motive behind it and it's the heart that can't move because no matter what gift you give to me i want to know what is you know the thought that can't so it's not that i have so much money that now i'm thinking oh i have nothing to do with this money let me just go and give it to charity you don't wait until when you have so much money to now give up from what god has blessed me with from the little that i have left and i know that there's some people that they own the privilege they don't have as much as i have so how come i can't give to them if it's 10 pounds left after I've paid all my bills and I can sow that into somebody's life, that is something. That 10 pounds can change somebody's life rather than me keeping it to do something that is irrelevant. So that's why I am here that I don't want to send my money forth. I want to be here physically. I want to do the work. I want to go and see people physically. I want to, you know, feel the touch. It's different than when you're on your phone or your, your AC and you think you're doing the work. It's not the same. I need to feel and really hear people real story from real people not what they're showing me on tv or what i'm seeing on social network i can't relate like that that's why i have to travel oh god on ferry to get here <laughs> that wasn't pleasant <laughs> you don't like water traveling no 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 <laughs> no i close my heart and i keep telling myself okay you're here on a mission remember okay okay because i don't like water no but i realize that if i have to come to syria alone i have to overcome that fear and so here I am because God sent me here and I'm sure if it's only one person that I can touch the life, trust me, my job is done. You want to help women and, and children? Was, yes. Two of the most vulnerable, vulnerable of the most society. marginalized. Yes. And you have been also looking at gender. Yeah. Africa is lioned by men. Hmm. Chauvinism is the in thing in Africa. I've heard women talking about patriarchy. Mm. And now you are looking at ways to which you can help women. How could women be helped? Because if you help the women, you're helping the children. These That's are true. the ones who are always with the children. Thank Although you. it's blended almost all the time, women and children, but by helping women, you you're help the children. the children. That's so true. How do you want to do it here? Because if you don't, you can't take somebody to where you've never been. If we have majority of women that they are illiterate, that they didn't even, you know, they don't, they're not educated, there's no way they can help the children. And my understanding is this, especially for men, if men are so educated and you're married to an illiterate that doesn't even have a clue of what to do, I still have to question your literacy because the problem is that you're leaving your child with somebody that is not educated to raise for you. So what do you think will happen at the end of the day? They are the next generation. So my job is here, is to educate women. It's never too late for you to be educated. It's never too late for you to get training of one sort or the other. It's never too late to start believing in yourself. If you don't want to do it for yourself, do it for your children. Do you want your children to go through what you go through? How fear is that? 
Because if your child come up with their own work, how are you going to help them? This is what we're dealing with. Because a woman that is, bat that is battered, abused, lost everything about herself, low self-esteem, how are you going to help your children? If your child come home and say, Mom, I'm going to be this, you'll be like, slow down. It, it, nobody do that. Because you too, you don't even know what it takes. So my job here is to empower women, touch them, encourage them, even by faith. Because obviously, I'm a strong believer that with God, all things are possible. If you believe, God can change your life. So my job is that. That's why people are fascinated with my page. Because what I put out there is real. I put sometimes I will write my story to encourage them. Sometimes I will go in the Bible. I put out the scripture to encourage you. And I always back it up that this is it. This is what I've been through. And this is how God helped me. So people can relate to that. I'm not just talking of my age or talking of where I've not been to. I'm telling you about my journey. I'll put it on my page. Follow my journey. This is my journey. I've been through the time that I don't have a place to sleep. I've been through the time that I don't have money to eat. I've been through this one. This is what God have done. I've been through a time that I have low self-esteem. I'm thinking, can I actually do anything when you're cleaning people's... I mean, come on. You're cleaning people's toilets. And in, in, in my country, it's not that I'm not educated. I study. I've already been to school. And I'm, I came to a place that now I have to clean the toilet. I have to clean somebody's bed. I have to do all that kind of, kind of odd jobs. And I'm thinking, maybe I'm not good for Maybe I'm not good after all. Maybe this is what I'm good for. But God changed that. If you can do it for me, he can do it for you. You can't give up on yourself. Especially for the next generation. Women, do you know how valuable women are in the society? Women are multitask. Any company you go to, if you don't have a lot of women there, the chances that you will grow. I know you are a man, you can think, yeah, men. Oh yeah, we need men. I'm not here to just say women. We, no, 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 no. I'm not even up to that. But we need women. Women are the ones that they are at home, raising our generation. Because they're the first, you know, they're the first contact. Every day, a woman will be with your, will be with your child for 24 hours. You're telling them what to do. You're raising them. So imagine if we have women that they, they are sound mind in this nation. Do you know what will happen to the next generation? Because they, you already prepare your own child. There's nothing you cannot do, my son. There's nothing you cannot do, my daughter. Anything you want to do, go for it. Because I've done it before. But you know, you, your mind, you, you are there. We need women. Women are multitask. Women are the one cleaning, breastfeeding answering the phone, cooking for the husband, mentoring at the same time. That's a woman's job. Because sometimes you wonder, how do they do it? But that is how God created us. So if we are limited, if people limit us by not letting us be who we are, it's going to be terrible. That's why we have so much depression among women these days. They're depressed. Because there's something inside of you that you need to be. Somewhere, you know, you know it's like your real you is inside. And something is blocking you to be who you are. So you keep telling yourself, I can do more than I'm doing. I can be a better person. But there's something. There. The society is putting you down. Your husband is putting you down. You get to a state that your children will be putting you down. Because remember those children, if you have a boy, your boy will go to school. And then you will look down on mommy. Because all she can see is that, what does she know? Mommy is just mommy. Never amount to anything. Why would, you, why would you put yourself in a position like that? Even if you are an adult, there's no excuse. The generation we're living in now, you can study, you can do anything, you can go online, you can educate your mind. There's many things you can do. If you're good with your hand, if you're a fashion designer, please go ahead and do it. It's not everybody that will go to university. If you're, anything you know you're good with, everybody have a talent. I refuse to believe that you don't have a talent because you don't, you, no, I don't have nothing. Says who? There must be something you do, you think it's, oh, it's just a hobby. I just like sewing things. I just like painting nails. I just like putting something on my face. That is a gift. People are making money out of it. We have celebrity makeup artists. We have celebrity fashion designer. We have celebrity, uh, celebrity hairdresser, barbers. They're celebrity. And they're doing what they love to do. You have a hand. Use your hand. You have a brain. Use your brain. Don't wait on anybody. Don't think of oh, people that are on Facebook, on social network, they're better than you. They're not. They're just using what God has given to them. Now, this vision that has brought you to Sierra Leone, which areas have you identified and who are the possible partners you may have to work with? You do have a place here. Yeah. 
There are women, there mm. are children, yeah. there are people who must share this vision. This vision that has made it possible for you to change your station in life. Where you were 20 years ago is not where you are now. Definitely, it's a good vision. Yeah. It's a vision you intend to share. It's a vision that is going to better lives here. Mm. But who do you intend to work with? Have you identified individuals? Have you identified people? Have you identified institutions? I know you've been around for just a few days, but you may have met some people who've bought into this grand desire. I'm obviously a woman, like I said, and then children as well. So I'm into the charity, that that's what they do. That people that, you know, empower women, especially women that have been abused before, coming from, you know, uh, abused relationship. I'm into that. And then children, orphanage, people that are orphans as well. I'm looking to orphanage charity that we I can help because I mean, I know that due to what happened in Syria alone, they have so many of young children that they are in that position. I would love to work with them, people like that. And then women especially as well, because like I've been saying, we need women. If we can get the women right, we will get our children life. We will get it right at the same time. So I'm into that. Though I'm here for a few days, and then because online, what I've been, you know, what people have been saying to me, it's more like, you know, people are, oh, I don't think I can do anything. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not educated. I don't know what to do with my life. I'm an orphanage. I'm seeing a lot of people like that. If it's only one person that I travel on the land, on the ferry to come and see here, believe me, my job is done. It's not about loads of people. Do you see yourself as an agony aunt? <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. Trust me. I don't even, it's not something that I wanted to be that I said, oh, okay, today I want to be an agony aunt. People, they're drawn to me anywhere I go. They just want to talk to me. They're comfortable. They believe, you know, I have something to share with them. My daughter always said to me, mom, you give advice, even when people don't even ask you. I'll be like, well, I just give it anyway. <laughs> because when I say, because automatically I'm just, I'll be passionate if I see anything that's not going right, especially when it's come to relationship. Because these days I'm seeing marriages, two months old, six months, one year, they're getting divorced. My heart will be like, what are you guys doing? In six months in marriage, you want a divorce? What is going on? That's part of what inspired me to write the book. Do you know what marriage is? Marriage is an institution. Marriage is work. It's something that God ordained. You don't enter marriage if you're not ready for it. It's work. You can't say, oh, just because, you know, when I entered the marriage, I found out that my husband is snoring. So because of that, you're getting divorced. When you go to the toilet, he doesn't close the toilet seat. Divorce. You'll be shocked. Some of the stuff I heard, that why, the reason why people are getting divorced. There are some institutions who may have watched and who may want to contact you. Yes. After you would have been gone. Yes. How do they get you? You can go on my website, messyb.co.uk. Everything you need to know is there. And you can find me on my Facebook page, which is Messi on the stroke by Logun. The same thing on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. You can get me there. You can inbox me. I'm available. And everything you need to know is and on my page. And it's -E dot dot uk. Yeah. That's that it. M-E-R-C-Y-B dot co dot uk. That's my website. Everything right. is there. Okay. Yeah. Now, Mercy, you also did a reality show. Comparable yes. to X Factor. Yes. Comparable to America's Got Talent. Only that this one was uh, a gospel one where people yes. were invited to come and express themselves yes. through their singing talent yes. and it was called Time to, to shine. shine. Let me hear about that. Oh, Time to Shine. <laughs> Just like the name, beautiful. God gave me that vision because um, I remember that day I was watching um, X Factor you know, people going on S Factor and everything. And then I realized on the day that there's so many Christians, they went on the show and they want to be singing Amazing Grace and all that. That's not a show for Amazing Grace. They're looking for a <laughs> different art. And I was like, how come we don't have a platform like this as Christians? We need a platform that we can be able to sing about God. We can shout Jesus. Nobody will tell you not to. You can sing Amazing Grace if you want, but not on this show. And then I just switched off the TV. I said, you know, I'm tired. I'm going to my room. And I heard the Lord. I heard from my ear. I heard God say to me in my spirit, why not you? 
I'm thinking, me, I don't have what it takes. How can I do a show like that? It's huge. Because if you're saying you're doing, you're finding the talent. Have you seen the show before, um, S Factor? Have of course, Simon Cowell's show. So imagine, individual, now God is saying, you go and do something like that for your own people, for Christian to come and sing so that they won't need to go somewhere else. They can sing to glorify God. I said, God, I think you got the wrong person. I can't do this. Where am I going to start from? It was a real struggle for me. But as you know, you can't really struggle with God. It was a lot of challenges. I went through a whole lot. It was that was but, a but that was that was that was a lot of money too because it putting a, a reality show together yes. is desirous of a lot of money. Oh yeah. You know when you see the setting, yes. the auditioning, and all oh, that yeah. means it's a lot of money. Yes. So how were you able to do a show similar to that of X Factor, which we know <laughs> is not. <laughs> small money i know that's the grace of god <laughs> that is the god we have some help obviously and then with the grace of god and it's like because we believe like i always say whatever god has me to do i do it sometimes i struggle i won't say without questioning because god no thank god for his grace on my life because i will still say like oh god i don't think i can do this but it will empower us so obviously all our savings thank us to the life of my husband because he's a businessman that believe in my vision and say okay if you said god said you should do it let's do this so we based on that we trust what god wants us to do so we put our hand in money savings everything put together with people that can help and then we we go ahead to do it mercy you try to make a way where there is no way that's god i am saying it um <laughs> Somebody came to sing a gospel on X Factor. Yes. It was not a forum for gospel singing because yes. it's too worldly. Yes. You decided to create time to shine. Yes. For those people who've not been catered for. Yes. When you saw a black girl in an office on whom you had to wait and clean after. Yes. You repackaged yourself. That's it. By going to uni, mm -hmm. studying uh housing and things like that yes. and coming out to do real estate business yes your husband shared that vision yes. and today you are very very successful Amen. in that yes when you realized that not too many people had shoulders to cry on yes you put yourself out mm -hmm. to have them write to you ask you questions ask for your experiences yes. so that they can better their lives yes. today you are in sierra leone <laughs> and people could take advantage of your being here. Yes. If you were to ask them to contact you for solutions or mm. suggestions mm. towards solutions to their problems, yeah. what would you say? If I have to tell them what? Sorry, I didn't get that. For them to ask for solutions mm. or suggestions for solutions to their problems. <laughs> so you mean to, for them to come to me? To of have course. Some, yeah. What should they ask you? Hmm. I think first, they need to ask about my faith. Because without God, without my faith, I can't do what I do. Even the way you're summarizing it, 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 it kind of dawned on me. That's my life. You get what I mean? Uh, it's like I see a problem. Even my daughter always say to me, anytime I'm passionate about something now, she'll be like, Mom, slow down. Every time you're passionate about something, you go ahead to go and find a solution. Or God can tell you to do something. Your hand is full at the moment because I'm going somewhere. I'm saying, but what is Mom, calm down. Because everything I'm passionate about, whatever God will empower me to come up with a solution for it. And I seriously believe that that's how life's supposed to be. Because if something bothers you, what God is saying to you is that you are the one to change it. People always talk about change, but the change starts with you. Because if you do your own side, do you know we can change the world? What I'm doing here, I'm not the only one that can do this. Many people, other people will come to Sri Lanka to bring some form of a change. In my own capacity, this is what I can do. If it's one or two people that I can change their life, and those two people carry on now to change another two people. Do you see now? The change is going. That is my life. I'm all about change. If something is not right and I'm in a position to do so, I will. I love to speak to people that they're like-minded people that i don't waste my time if you don't want change please don't ask me for solution don't come to me i don't have time to waste 
that's why i keep saying that i won't fly god know how many hours it took me almost 10 hours to get to Sierra Leone to come and be talking story i don't talk stories i'm action woman Marcy, of the 42,000 people who follow you on yes. social media yes there is the thinking that you are wealthy <laughs> in terms of pounds you are wealthy <laughs> in british pound sterling okay mm. does that make you happy and feel like giving or it is the success the success or uh, the dependence on god and the extent to which he has favored you that's it maybe what's keeping you content thank you money or god god is god nothing but god everything you're saying right now is god and his favor i don't i don't have what i want yet trust me i'm on a journey i'm not where i can say i've arrived because i've not arrived i'm still on a journey what you see people can look at you because like i keep saying is the picture the how you carry yourself i don't have multi-million to be wasted waiting in my account some some days i share it on my on my page i have this that i don't have enough that i wanted to use but do you know what i carry on because with god favor it makes a way for me where there seems to be no way i don't have money stored up because when people sometimes people come to you they think you just have this money somewhere and you just want to be spending it no 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 no. it doesn't work like that that is not how life works you remember that to whom a lot is given a lot is expected a lot is expected so what I will need, it probably knows what other people will need. So that they would look at me and say, you're very wealthy. You don't know what it's like. But you don't know what I need. I still have to cry on God. I still have to pray to God to give me a certain level. Because the level that I want to go to, I need God's favor to get there. So you, you see what I mean? It's a different level. So that's why you don't look at somebody and say, I want to be like that person. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know my shoes. If and I to the young shoes, girl who is living in obscurity right yes. now in some far-flung African village mm. who has huge thoughts about a future yes. that she has created in her mind for herself, yes. but who is experiencing a no way out of where she finds herself. Yes. What would your story uh, make uh, to have her begin her road to success? You mean to follow a journey? You know the... What would your story mm -hmm. create for her to know that it's all not obscurity. There is a road on which she can I'm traverse. That's it. Where there's a will, there's, there's a, a way. way. Once you have your vision, there's no stopping you. This is what I say to people. If you don't have a vision, there's nothing anybody can do for you. If you come to me now and you said, okay, Messi B, this is what I want to do. I can help you because you know where you're going. All I can do is just mentor you and help you. But if you come to me and you say, I don't even know what I want to do. I have no clue of where I want to go. Where are we going to start? Did you see that it's a different journey entirely? So in the first place, there should you be a picture of, of where, where you have going. placed yourself That's it. Where you in your mind. Yourself. Yeah. Then you and then you it. ask someone to help you get Find there. A way. That's it. Because where they say we, that's why I say, where they say we, they say we. And with God, nothing shall be impossible. Your first assignment, if you don't have a vision, please don't feel bad that, oh, it's over. I don't have a vision. Has God, he created you. And everybody, God, everyone God created, he created them for a purpose. Your assignment is to ask, what is my purpose in life? If you ask and you really believe, God will show you. It might be you, ha you, you have it right under your nose. Like I was saying earlier on, you might be good with your hand. There might be something you do with your eyes closed. And that is exactly what God wants you to do. So if you can believe in yourself and take time out and say, what am I good at? Forget about everybody. Forget you're not them. We are all different. My journey is different. Your journey is different. So if you can find your own way that, what am I good at? Why do I do what I do? What do I do? Why do I do what I do? You get what I mean? If you can do that, then you will find that, that oh my God, this is my gift all along. If I want to go into Bible, most of God will ask you. Even when Moses was like, I don't know what I have. God said, what do you have in your hand? 
there's something you have in your hand. Every I refuse to believe. People always say to me that there's some people that they don't they don't have nothing. They don't know what to do. It's a lie. There's something you can do that I cannot even do it. You might have some gift that when I look at you, I'll be like, wow, this is amazing. I mean, you've seen some show. They said, uh, is the American got talent or something? You'll be like, wow, how do you do that? Somebody how do you make do dogs talk? Thank you. Can you do that? I can do that. But if I see somebody that can do that, I have to respect you because that's your gift. Because your gift will take you before great men. What you have will allow you to come before me and I will have to respect your gift because I can't do what you do. And if you just watch this, uh, fall in love with his vision, not his wallet by Mercy Balogun, the woman I've just been talking to, and you want to read this book. This book, she wrote about the man she fell in love with. The man who wasn't rich, so she couldn't fall in love with his wallet, <laughs> but who had it big in his head, that was vision, which she fell in love with. And today, they are wealthy in their own right, not in Leon's terms, not in Naira terms, in <laughs> British pound terms. I We're going to have this on social media, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. And if you contact us quickly, you're going to uh, be in possession of either this book or this whole package. Find out what's there. There are two t-shirts there that you might also like. We're going to have this on social media very soon. If you contact us, uh, you will be the owner of uh, this package where you'll get to know more about uh, Mercy Balogun. Uh, Mercy, this is how I thank you very much My for pleasure. finding time to <laughs> talk to us on all these wonderful things thank you've you. done. I know that in the not too distant future, falling in love with his vision, not his wallet, will be the watchword for many young girls who may be looking for the wallet and not the vision. Amen. Once again, thank you very much, Mercy. <laughs> thank you very I much. I am sure a lot of people have enjoyed uh, listening to you and watching you. And Thank I hope you. I get to talk to you again, not too long yes. from now, especially when you have uh, this intention of having uh, charity. Your, your charity here in Sierra yes. Leone and working with some other organizations that are biased towards making humanity grow. That's it. That's my intention. And that's how we'll <laughs> leave you. Thank you very much for Thank watching. Thank you very SMBC. much. Thank you. <laughs>